who would swim in the Arctic, right, <laughs> without any proper gear on? That's crazy. Go on, mate. Come on. Right, here we go. Here's the moment of truth. Is it going to work? We could easily fall off it and the whole mission would be over. Hello everybody, Mr. Sticksman here, and welcome to episode 21 of my Stormworks career mode Let's Play. Now guys, if you look over my shoulder there, there's something in the water, and that, as you may remember, is the seaplane, which we kind of ditched from last time. Uh, the landing was okay, but the waves got the better of us, and the air intake was flooded, so the engine no longer ran. Now what we're going to have to do is save that to begin the episode. But guys, I've been working on something brand new, okay? I've actually... Now, I'll explain what that is in a short while, but we've kind of made a new boat, which was a bit unexpected, um, but it is designed for the Arctic, and it's got a few features which hopefully will get us through a number of missions here. So I'm really looking forward to that, guys. I can't wait to show you. I hope you like it. But first of all, let's go and save the seaplane. And of course, as well later, if we can, we will actually try and do a mission as well. All right, let's get into the water and save that plane. Okay, so my plan is to actually just jump in the water and I'm gonna try and turn it round just by hand and then motor it back if possible to the dock because you know it is a bit more calm now as you can see the waves are not that big there's a few around but it should be much easier to get this motor started and if we can we'll just go in a straight line back to the dock now if that fails we can use the winch on the fuel tank over there you can just see over the the bow of the plane here or the nose of the plane so that is an option but if possible, I want to do this a bit easier. And also, I, I'm not quite sure um, uh, exactly where the build area for the workbench is. And I believe it's probably a bit to the left of the fuel tank. So to make sure we can despawn this back into the workbench, we want to make sure we get it sort of in between the tank and the workbench. Now, you can see that I'm actually quite warm at the moment, and I do have the heater of the plane running. I forgot to turn it off last time. I don't think the batteries will be in too much danger if we hurry up here. And also, I'm wearing my Arctic gear and not my diving gear, which kind of sounds like a silly idea. But actually, you get so cold in that diving gear, um, it'd be much better for us to wear this uh, instead. So anyway, this is working quite well, guys, as you can see. Now, as the plane is leaning... Um, it's going to turn the direction it's leaning, if you know what I mean, because it's going to be gripping on the water on the right-hand side of the plane. So I'll have to make sure that I try and straighten her up really, really well, and then use that uh, sort of tail rudder at the back to ensure that we go in the right direction. Okay, but we must be almost... Oh, there we go, look. We're almost pointing in the right direction now. That's so good. Uh... And luckily this plane is not big, so you can adjust it by hand if you need to. It's actually a very useful uh, ability there. It's getting a bit darker now, because the sun is going down. But uh, anyway, let's get in the seat here. Oh, I'm putting my gear off by mistake. Let's get in the seat and see what we can do. Excellent. Now let's turn it on then. Uh, oh, bit of throttle. Maybe about sort of 40%, 30%. There we go, 40%. Start her up, and straight away, if I can show you guys, I'm going to use that rudder right at the back, that yellow one there. And the engine may start and stop a few times. Okay, yeah. It, oh, no, the waves are picking up again, guys. <laughs> it's all right. We can do it. Come on. There we go. Go on, mate. Come on. Is it going to start? We're going to turn the heater off just to save a bit of power. This is dangerous for the battery, but I'm going to leave that starter motor on for a minute. Okay, we're getting closer. Might put a waypoint down, actually, so we can see how far we need to go. Oh, there we go. Look, we're out of the water. Okay, let's use our roll control surfaces here to see if we can level out the plane. That's good. We're leveling out. I am concerned about the battery, but, I mean, we're moving, right? So that's a good thing. Yes. And as you can see, I'm now getting a bit colder. The heater is off. But we are making very good progress here. Very quickly put a waypoint down. 
to see how far we are because the winch on the fuel tank is about 100 meters long so if we stay well within that we know we can use that if we need to uh, but look at this it is working fantastically well I'm actually amazed at how well the battery's doing too I'm surprised it's still going uh, I'm gonna actually turn off the starter and see if it stays on yep oh that's amazing Okay, just turning right a bit here guys this is really good okay I don't want to smash it into the dock because we might sink if that's the case and then it might be out of the build area so we do want to be careful okay let's just do that my hands are all over the keyboard in different places this is not good okay okay right let's hope that is a good position I'm going to cut the engine here if not we can move it by hand guys so it's not you know it's not a problem as such but there's a ladder over there. Let's hope that is good enough and we'll take it right back into the workbench as soon as possible. Right, here we go. Here's the moment of truth. Is it going to work? Please. Yes, it's worked. Okay, I'm so glad about that, guys, because in the past, I have had massive issues returning vehicles uh, into docks and things. It's been real, real, real difficult sometimes. So if anyone has had problems with that and you've got questions about returning vehicles, if anyone's stuck with it, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll tell you everything I know about it to try and help. But anyway, we've done that. Now, the next thing, guys, is to actually uh, show you the brand new boat I've been working on, okay? Now, actually, I say brand new boat, right? It, it kind of is. But you guys, if you've seen the previous episodes, you may have seen this thing before, but it was only uh, a very basic version of it. In fact, I think I only showed you the hull and maybe uh, a superstructure or something because a long, long time ago, and I can't remember what episode it was, I showed off a boat which was a work in progress and we just never used it. Uh, so, you know, you, you guys might know what I'm talking about here, but I'm going to put it on screen right now. And here it is. Now, you guys might recognize it. It is a bit different. I've actually made the hull way better now. It's the same length, the same width and stuff like that. But it's deeper because I've got a much better uh, V shape down here. And it is a bit dark, but you can see hopefully roughly that it's it's much, much better than it was before, if you remember it. Um, but this thing is designed to work very well in the Arctic. I've got a custom blue here and I've got the dark grey, which is this colour over on the palette. And, uh, you know, the interior is not much. It's literally, this is the only uh, sort of interior it has. But uh, we'll go through that in a second here. So first of all, what are the main features of this boat? Well, to begin with, you know, it's a bit bigger than our red boat. So and it's heavier as well. So it is going to be more suited to choppy conditions. OK, it needs a bit of weight and size to deal with those waves because the waves up here are bigger in general and you can get yourselves into massive trouble. It really is a big challenge, guys, in the Arctic. Do come prepared if you're going to do missions here. But uh, yeah, apart from those basic ideas about being suited to the Arctic, we have a winch here. Now, of course, you know, all boats have winches. This is not that different. But I just made something that I've never really made before. And this winch is on tracks, okay? So it will start in deck a bit, and then you can move it out with this throttle lever to the edge of the boat where there's an indentation here. So when you wanna lower down and recover the connector, it doesn't get stuck underneath the hull of the boat. And hopefully that's gonna be really useful to us. But I've also got a light here and that's pretty much it. I do have these electric connectors just to fix the connector on, uh, you know, to bring it, uh, bring it down and lock it in place so it's not gonna fly about everywhere. Um, and also I've got this normal connector here, but we can change it for a mag if we ever need to. So that, that's pretty cool right there. It works very well. And here I've just made this sort of, uh, what do you call it? Like, like a control console or something. Um, it's a bit different. I haven't really done that before, but I just thought it'd be quite nice to do something different. Uh, these are on pivots here. So the whole control surface area does tilt towards the seat. It is quite nice. Um, also, this seat controls twin fluid cannons. Now, I was originally right. I was going to build one fluid cannon on the bow. And I couldn't really get it to be strong enough because I had a lot of piping, right, to get to this thing. It Because I couldn't really put the fluid ports for it anywhere but back here, like on the sides of the boat. 
Um, and that meant that I had a lot of piping to get all the way over here and therefore the pumps were having to work really hard and it just wasn't a good idea. What I have done is put them at the stern of the boat and I put two on here just so it's a bit more symmetrical really but actually I was thinking about it when I tested it right and by the way these are super powerful they go a long way but also if you have two um, there's a better chance of putting out a fire because they actually where the streams end up they're quite close together and so if you're moving about in the waves having having two streams of water is it is going to give you a much better chance of putting out a fire compared to one it just works out really well so i'd love to test it i've never used two before but i think it's actually quite a good idea in the end um, and if we have a look in the hull itself you can see i've just got uh, the fluid ports right underneath straight up into the cannon so that is the best way to do it guys is to have as little distance between the cannon and the fluid port as possible uh, so straight up here using the bigger pumps and these things fire water a long way i was actually quite surprised at how far it went so that that's great and hopefully we can put out some fires i'm not actually sure if there are any missions which would require fluid pumps in the arctic there might be but uh, I've got it here just in case. And if we want to use it down south as well, we can do, right? And I've got a big battery here. Just one of those. That's plenty for what we need. Now, here is the interesting part to this boat as well. I'm using a water jet. Now, that's something I haven't used before in the YouTube series, of course. And if you're not familiar with these things, they're a bit tricky to set up properly. But you don't need rudders and you don't need a reverse gear. Now, as I say, they're not easy to set up. So I have... You know, I've done an okay job of it, but I'm sure a lot of you guys can do this better than me. But the way you turn these things is by using these deflectors here. So you've got a left deflector and a right deflector. And if you move one of them in, the, the jet of water is going to push against it and turn the boat. So to turn, you're actually using these deflectors instead of rudders. Now there are, I think there are sort of benefits to it, but also some you know pros and cons as well. And what you can do with this though, is almost turn on the spot with these. It's amazing guys, you can literally do donuts. They're so, so good at turning. And I have actually reduced the deflector movement by half because it was so aggressive that my boat was actually capsizing when I was turning. So it may not be perfect yet, but we shouldn't be capsizing. It's uh, you'll, you'll see when we get to use it anyway, but it's super cool. And also in a recent update, the developers have made these things more powerful as they were in the old days. So they are hard for an engine to push them. They're actually quite hard work to use for any engine, but they're very, very good if used properly. Okay, now to reverse these things, all you have to do is actually bring in both deflectors together at the same time and the boat will actually reverse. So you don't even need a reverse gear. And I have kept that on the button. So I just press a button and the boat will instantly start going backwards. Uh, it's incredible. It won't stall. You know, the engine is still working as it normally would. It's just in going in the other direction. So it, it's super cool. But I could have used it with W and S to, uh, to make things even easier. But in the end, I just thought I'd use a button. It was easier for me to set up properly. Okay, so that's that. That's pretty interesting. And hopefully you guys will enjoy that when we get to use it. And then up here, I've got... Now, here's the gearbox. I have two gears for this boat. I've got a three to one as uh, as the main base gear. And that makes it easy for us to get going. Because as I say, these fluid jets are quite hard work for an engine. Even these big diesels here, right? So I thought I'd uh, have the first gear quite easy to use for the engine. And then we go down to six to five, which gives us the maximum possible speed in this boat. Now it's not, you know, lightning fast this boat, but it is fairly quick. But we are going to have to watch our fuel as well. And we'll get onto that in a minute. But uh, yeah, it, it's good. Basically, it's a good start for us to use this setup here. And then I've got a small generator on a three to one ratio. And then over here, just a, a big diesel engine, just one of them with the standard 20 RPS limiter, 100% power, of course. And then all of my pipes. So here are the exhaust pipes and they go right up the top. It's pretty cool. And then I've got the air intake down here, just under the ladder on the back of the cabin there. And here is the fuel tank. I've gone for a custom tank this time. They're a bit heavier than the ordinary tanks that you get in the inventory. Uh, but you do get a bit more fuel in less space, you know, in the hull. So I thought I'd go with this setup for now. And it holds 
just over 4,000 litres in that small tank there, which is pretty good actually. And inside you can see I've got some wedges. I could do a better job, but actually it's it's pretty good. And we do, uh, we've do we got a fluid meter and a fluid spawner only because in creative mode, uh, the fluid spawners, you know, obviously put diesel into your tank straight away so you don't have to fill it up. Uh, but, but in actual fact, in career mode, the spawner does nothing at all. So we are going to be using diesel from our tank on the island properly, of course, guys. Don't worry about that. In fact, I could even remove it, to be honest. Is that my spawner? There we go. There's this. Okay, I'll remove it. I'll remove it. There we are. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> Done. Gone. Okay. Uh, now next, the hull, I mean it's more of a V-shape as I said, and then down here we have uh, a line of weight blocks which ends sort of there as you can see, it takes up about a third of the length of the boat, but also we have a second uh, line of weight blocks underneath or on top of that one which goes further towards the uh, the stern and the bow as, as some under this wedge here I believe, yes there you go. So quite a bit of weight underneath. To be honest, guys, I do need it to be a bit heavier down where the keel is. So I might do a bit of work on that at some point. But it's all right. It works for now. And now here's the pilot house. So fairly simple, I guess. We've got some nav lights on, red and green. And we do have a white one at the back as well. We have a ladder to get onto the roof, some windows and some passenger seats. I've only got two passenger seats for now. But that shouldn't really be too much of a problem. We've got some handles, grab handles in case we need it to <laughs> get up the steps when it's really choppy. Uh, more, more there for looks really, but they might come in handy. We have a very small solar panel strip in between these two windows here on the roof. And inside we have firefighting equipment. We have the Arctic gear of course and diving gear as well. We have a heater under the seat there and you know, so basically kind of you know it, it's pretty much what you'd expect uh, but most of it should be here and in fact what I do have as well is this right this is vertical trim because on the fluid uh, cannon here or sorry the fluid jet right if I how do I show you guys this I think in data here you go here's the fluid jet and you've got a vertical trim. Now that actually means that instead of using trim tabs on the back of your boat or whatever, you can use just the jet itself to point the water in the right direction up and down. It sort of pitches it. So we've got that and we've got it set to a very small number, I think. There you go, 0 0.05, a tiny number. But it does have an effect and it will keep the bow down. One of the problems I've had with this, as you will see, is that the bow kicks up a lot and you can even like nearly flip this thing from going at a standstill. That's how powerful it is. <laughs> and that doesn't mean it's going to get massive top speed. It kind of lurches forwards and then it evens out at a nice pace after that. But uh, but we've got to be careful and that's why I've put the gearing in and also this uh, this vertical trim here. Okay, now here is the reverse button. So all you have to do, and you don't even have to put the clutch in to reverse, you literally just keep the engine running and you press this button here. I think it's, yeah, that one. And it literally just starts reversing very quickly indeed. It's really good. Here's the gear button, that's the throttle. I've got ignition. And that is the clutch there on the other side. I have speed in knots. I've got, you know, temperature, fuel, RPS, battery, generator, all that kind of basic stuff really. Um, and yes, that's that's it, guys. So I hope you like it. I don't think I've missed anything. It is working. It can be better, as always. You know, anything that I build, it can always be improved. I've got a small connector on the front there. So I'm hoping that's going to be really, really useful to us. And certainly because I have, of course, tested it a bit in creative mode just to make sure it works. And it's, it's okay so far. So uh, now I don't know what mission we're going to do today, guys. I don't know if we're even going to use the boat. I will if I can. But what I'm going to do now is go to sleep and hopefully get a, a nice mission for us to do our first ever mission in the Arctic, guys. And uh, yeah, that should be a lot of fun. So I'll be back with you in a short moment and we'll, uh, and we'll get on our way with a new mission. Okay, guys, now I've got our new mission and it is going to be using the helicopter this time. So I'll have to use the new boat in hopefully the next episode, actually. I'm really looking forward to that. But this mission is a good one for us to do right now. So I'll show you what it is. And we have to rescue a stranded swimmer. A lone swimmer has been spotted clinging onto a chunk of ice in a lake on the Arctic mainland. He is unlikely to survive for very long with no thermal protection and is too fatigued to swim back to shore. Search the lake for him 
before the cold overcomes him. Okay, that is going to be fine. 25 minutes to go. I've spawned in the helicopter here and I have just added uh, some thermal clothing here, which is the Arctic gear I'm wearing right now and the diving gear as well. So let's get this thing fueled up and we'll get on our way. So we have some more fuel tanks. Now these are different to what we've seen before. We have jet fuel here, which is interesting and diesel as well, but the tanks are much smaller. How are they? Okay, I think they're 10,000, yeah, 9,500 litres here. But uh, that should be enough cable by now, I think. Let's hope so. Come around the corner and fill her up. There we go. And look how quickly it fills up, guys. That's amazing. Already done. Lightning quick, that is. Done. Okay, let's get into the seat then, guys. Turn her on. And everything should be as normal with any luck. So on the map here, this is where we are, of course. And we're going to just fly over to the big lake in the middle of the mainland. And if I just actually put my... If I track the mission... There we go. There's the search area. So it could be anywhere in here. We'll have to do some searching. But it is a proper search and rescue mission, this one. So uh, that is what the game is about, guys. Okay, just going to be careful taking off in the hangar because believe it or not, even though we have, we've had this aircraft for quite a long time now, but I have never taken off with it inside a hangar before. That seems crazy to me. <laughs> but there we go anyway. Uh, on the way, and it shouldn't be too far actually. There you go, two and a half kilometres in this helicopter. That's just nothing at all, is it? So, uh, Okay, now I guess you could actually do this mission with a land vehicle because there are roads here. We're just going to fly over that road now which connects our island to the mainland. Um, and yeah, you could sort of drive over to that big lake and then get into the water just by swimming if you really want to, I suppose. But of course, it is easier with a helicopter if you have one. So that's what we are going to do. And here is the lake. So... There's the train shed look over there, which you can buy that one. We might end up buying that at some point. But here is the lake. Now, this whole area is not actually that big, is it, really? It looks massive on the map. But, okay. Uh, let me see. Where is this person, then? It's quite tricky to see. Iceberg down there. No, not on there. Come a bit lower. Okay, well, let's put auto hover on. I forgot. <laughs> it's much easier with auto hover. We're not over there. Can't see them yet. Let's check we're in the right place. Yep, we're, we're right in the middle of the search area. Oh, there they are. Look. Oh, that's so difficult to see. They are very tricky to see, but we can fly right over there. Now, you could actually land on the iceberg. But you know what, guys? I'm not going to do that because it seems to be moving around. And we could easily fall off it and the whole mission would be over. <laughs> so I'm not going to risk it. But it's super calm here and we can just land on the water, right? That shouldn't be a problem at all. And luckily, of course, I do have passenger seating on this helicopter. Now, can I actually get onto that from the water? That's my only question. Can I... Yeah, let's... Okay, let's try around this side. If I just put the helicopter down here, and then I'll, do, I'll make a run for it. I'll swim. <laughs> we'll swim up to it. Just want, don't want to take any risks here. Okay, good. Right. Okay, so I'll press F to get out of the seat, and I'm going to sprint off it, just so that I don't... Because my body weight can easily tip that helicopter, guys, so I have to be really careful with that. But if we can, we'll just jump up the side. There we go. Nice and easy. Right, God. Who would swim in the Arctic, right, <laughs> without any proper gear on? That's crazy. This guy is crazy. Uh, no. Okay, do I have a heater on this thing? Where's my heater gone? Right, we better we better hurry up because I think I've forgotten to add my heater. <laughs> okay, where is our destination then? Let's see, it's not that far away, is it? In fact, it's literally just over here. <laughs> How can he get lost? He can probably see the building. Oh, never mind. All right. 500 meters to go. And already 
we have nearly completed the mission. Okay, now guys, don't forget we might even find a crate down here if we're lucky. And also, I'm wondering how much money we're going to get because, of course, we've got all of the research points now. So, it could be interesting. We might get increased money uh, to replace the research points that we're not going to get. So, yeah, hopefully we'll do that and find a crate at the same time and it'll be quite profitable. But let's land in a nice clear area there. That's very good. I'm going to shut it down to be on the safe side. Brilliant. Let's get in there and uh, and find out how much money we get. Now, I think I might have been in this building before, actually. Okay, and I guess I just deliver the person here, right? In the main hallway. Oh, there we go. Okay, six... That Wait a minute. Why am I still getting research points? <laughs> okay, never mind. $6,000. Not that much, but you know what? It's so easy, that mission, that I don't mind too much. And now we have over $55,000 again, uh, which is fantastic. But let's have a go at exploring the building. And you can get onto the roof, actually. So we'll do that as well. See if we can find any crates here. Uh, dartboard with one dart. I wish you could use the telescopes. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Even if you could, like, place them on your vehicles and use them. I'd quite enjoy that. Okay, there's some kind of office room here. But nothing in there. That's cool. The map of the island. These things, guys, are going to be with us in the next major update. Let's try over this side of the building. Uh, okay, nothing in the kitchen. Uh, nothing in here either. What well, are these bedrooms? Okay, nothing in that bedroom. And probably nothing here either. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Never mind. I mean, you know... We still completed a mission. I don't mind too much. Okay, now we can go onto the roof. So let's do that. And where do we go to get on there? Is it around the back or something? There we are. Unfortunately, nothing here at all. But it's interesting to come up here anyway. What's this? What is that? Like a toaster. <laughs> uh, what's that? I've got no idea what these things are. Oh, well. Nothing here, guys. But there's the helicopter. There's some uh, containers over there. Okay, guys. So now that is all done, let's fly back to base. Um, I mean, I think we used about one litre getting over here. Yeah, about one litre. That's crazy. It's so cheap. <laughs> it's amazing to fly this thing. Where is base, actually? Uh, just going to to think of it i think it's over this direction is that it there there we go that's base i'll just check that on the map <laughs> there we go there we go done now by the way guys um in series two which i will be starting when the next major update comes out um i'm going to be building a much better helicopter for that series of course now i've learned a bit more about them and I've just got plans for new vehicles across the board, really. So I can't wait to get that series started. I can't wait for the next major update. And don't forget, guys, on the 24th of July, um, the developers are going to be releasing some information about the next big update, including the release date and all, apparently, all of the features that it will include as well. And so on the 24th of July, 8 p.m. BST, I am going to do a live stream and I'm going to read through all of the notes the developers write and I'm going to hopefully chat to you guys about it and we'll have a, a bit of fun over there and discover all of the details that we can. Um, and apparently there might even be some secrets that we don't even know about yet coming into the update. So that's really exciting. That is actually uh, this week. <laughs> We're going to get that information this week. So do stay tuned over on Twitch, 8pm BST on the 24th of July. And uh, and yes, uh, that should be a good one. Alright, but let's take this helicopter back in. I'm going to put the fuel back into the tank if we can. <laughs> let's hope it works. If not, we won't lose that much, will we? Look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, and the fuel connector should be on this side, which is good. So just flip the switch here. There we go. Uh, yes, it's working. Fuel is leaving the tank. 
Oh, look at that. I shouldn't keep winching out, should I? <laughs> oh, that couldn't have gone better, guys. Super easy. Super quick. $6,000 and a load of research points we don't even need. <laughs> Okay, guys, but that is all we have time for in this episode. Uh, in the next episode, I really want to use the new boat that we've been working on, so I can't wait for that. And I'm sure there are plenty of missions we can use that for in the very, very near future. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing and commenting. You guys are amazing. I really do appreciate it uh, every single time. Take care, everybody, and hopefully see you all very, very soon. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.